On Friday, the U.S. Army announced that they were canceling the Future Attack Reconnaissance Aircraft, or FARA helicopter program, an effort that's been underway since 2018 and has already seen more than $2.4 billion invested. Now, the Army says that by canceling this program now, they can save some $5 billion in further developmental costs, and instead, they'll be assigning the responsibilities that would have gone to this helicopter to a variety of unmanned drones. Of course, this decision is not without its critics. After all, this is the third time in recent decades that the Army has begun development on an advanced new Scout helicopter, invested billions into its development, and then just thrown the effort in the trash. So what prompted the Army to cancel this third Scout helicopter program that we know as FARA? And was it the right choice? Let's talk about it. The U.S. Army kicked off their Future Attack Reconnaissance Aircraft, or FARA, program back in 2018 as a part of the Army's broader future vertical lift effort. Now, the FARA helicopter was meant to serve as a direct replacement for the now already retired OH-58 Kiowa Scout Warrior helicopters, as well as about half of today's existing AH-64 Apache attack helicopter fleet, meaning this new FARA helicopter was meant to serve as both a scout and attack platform. But now the Army thinks it can do that attack and scout helicopter job more efficiently using a variety of lower cost drones and UCAVs, some of which will likely be flying in unison with updated AH-64 Apaches in a sort of manned-unmanned teaming effort not all that dissimilar from the Air Force's Skyborg program that aims to equip sixth-generation fighters with AI-enabled drone wingmen. In other words, in the future, the AH-64 is envisioned as flying alongside a variety of drone wingmen of its own. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't add some more detail to the fact that this is the third time the Army has invested billions of dollars into fielding a replacement for the OH-58 just to decide to cancel it halfway through. The first one, and maybe highest profile, was the RAH-66 Comanche, which many of you know as a stealth helicopter. Now, the Comanche saw some $7 billion in developmental costs throughout the 1990s and early 2000s before being canceled in 2004. And with the Comanche canceled, but the Army still in need of a scout helicopter, they began development on the ARH-70A, which saw another between two and six billion dollars invested in its development, depending on your source, before it too was canceled in 2008. Ten years later, in 2018, the Army decided to try again, this time with their Future Attack Reconnaissance Aircraft, or FARA, program. Now, the Army was pretty clear in what they wanted out of these FARA helicopters. They described it as a knife fighter in the rotorcraft family. This helicopter was to be jam-packed with combat capability and high performance in a very small package. The Army's requirements listed its rotor diameter as under 40 feet, which would make it a bit smaller than an AH-1 Cobra. But despite its small size, this helicopter would come with a massive amount of combat capability and performance delivered through emerging technologies, like a new engine developed in the Army's improved turbine engine program. In June of 2019, the Army delivered six developmental contracts to different firms around the country to field their own proposals. And by March of 2020, the Army had whittled that six down to just two. The Sikorsky Raider X and the Bell 360 Invictus. Now, Bell's groundbreaking tilt rotor V280 Valor has already secured the Army contract to serve as the long-term replacement for America's aging H-60 series Black Hawk helicopters. But the Bell 360 Invictus could be seen as the more traditional rotorcraft design in the FARA competition. In fact, the 360 is based in at least some part on the existing commercial Bell 525 Relentless, at least in terms of its engineering. Now, the 360 Invictus is a fairly small rotor craft, and it looks a bit like an updated futuristic AH-1 Cobra. Its rotor is a bit smaller than the Cobra's, however, at exactly 40 feet, and it is a whole lot faster. The AH-1 is known to top out at around 140 miles per hour, whereas the 360 Invictus is known to exceed 210 miles per hour. Now, it's capable of doing that in part because of its updated GE T-901 
turbo shaft engine, but also thanks to its supplemental Pratt & Whitney 207D1 turbo shaft that can add an extra 586 horsepower when needed. Now that supplemental engine can also be used to power systems for things like ground maintenance when you don't want to power up the larger turbo shaft engine. This two-seat tandem cockpit aircraft has a 20 millimeter cannon mounted under the nose and a pair of mid-mounted stub wings that actually produce enough lift at speed to offset 50% of the helicopter's weight. And its improved engines and aerodynamic design give this rotorcraft a combat radius of about 155 miles, assuming 90 minutes on station once you get there. And to be honest, this is actually one of the biggest problems with the FARA competition. We'll get back to that in a minute. Now, the Invictus's competition from Sikorsky, the Raider X, is a much more exotic and futuristic looking design. In fact, when I was poking around this airframe in Washington, D.C. a few months ago, I could not help but feel like I was looking at a helicopter from the future. Now, that is in no small part thanks to what Sikorsky calls their X2 technology, which includes using two coaxial rotors and a pusher propeller on the back of the rotor craft on its tail. Now that pusher propeller really does add a great deal of speed to this platform. In fact, the Raider X is said to have a top speed in excess of 290 miles per hour, which is just astonishing for a rotor craft of this sort. And maybe even more impressive, it does it without adding a supplemental engine the way the Bell entry needs to. It's powered solely by that one GE T901 turboshaft engine. But despite being the more exotic design, one could argue that this Raider X concept had just as much, if not more, potential for expanded roles and responsibilities. This really could be a general purpose rotorcraft contracted initially to serve as a scout and light attack helicopter. But we now know that neither of these rotorcraft will be selected after all, and instead, the Army is doing away with this program altogether. And as Army Acquisition Chief General Randy George has said, this decision was motivated in large part by the Army's close attention to what's going on on the battlefield today in places like Ukraine, saying that aerial reconnaissance has fundamentally changed in the 21st century. The Army now believes that incorporating sensors and weapons mounted on a variety of unmanned aircraft can do the same job with less risk and for less cost. And that sentiment received some direct support from retired Army Major General John Ferrari in an op-ed published by Breaking Defense on Friday. In that op-ed, Ferrari explained that the sum of $5 billion the Army is saving by canceling this program now will not only go toward the development of new technologies, but it'll also go toward sustaining and updating existing platforms like the long-serving CH-47 Chinook and the AH-64 Apache, as well as paying some other bills. For instance, lawmakers have established a 5% pay increase for all service members in 2024, but only a 1% increase in top-line budget, meaning the rest of that pay increase needs to be found elsewhere by cutting other programs. So was this the right call, or was this a decision made by budgetary necessity? Is there just not enough funds to go around, or does the Army really think this FARA concept doesn't have legs? Well, the truth is probably somewhere in between. The Army would never turn down an advanced and capable new rotor craft, but likewise, they're probably right that this job is better filled by a variety of drones, especially because the ranges offered by these FARA competitors, which are not totally disclosed, but are understood to be less than 200 miles, just aren't enough for a Pacific conflict. Put simply, any platform with a combat radius of just 200 miles or so would see very little practical use in the sprawling expanses of the Pacific if war with China ever were to break out. So the Army could ultimately invest tens of billions of dollars into developing and then purchasing these helicopters, only to find that they don't have an actual role to fill in the next near-peer conflict America's preparing for. The truth is, combat range was a big selling point for the V-280 Valor, which not only has a combat radius of an estimated 600 to 950 miles, but can also conduct in-flight refueling, giving this rotor craft some significant legs that would be extremely important in a Pacific conflict. And on top of all that, if you were to just use the V-280 Valor for some of the roles the FARA helicopters were meant to fill, well, that's just one fewer airframe. You need to maintain the ability to repair and operate in an austere environment. That reduces logistical headaches by a wide margin. 
So does all that mean canceling this FARA program was the right call? Well, to tell you the truth, it depends a lot on your perspective. It's hard not to look at some $10 billion getting thrown out the window on three different helicopter development programs that ultimately got canceled midway through in just the past few decades. But conversely, whether you like this decision or not, I would contend that the fact that the Army made this decision at all is a pretty good sign. It means that despite the fact that they knew this would be a controversial decision and they knew the media was going to eat them alive with headlines about all these billions of dollars wasted, they still looked at the evidence they had at hand and made a decision based on what they thought would produce the most effective combination of platforms for a future conflict. They made this choice based not on what they thought would be popular or what would be well received, but rather on what would be effective. And that line of thinking alone is a good thing to have in your military leadership. Is it cool that the Army burned another couple of billion dollars on yet another helicopter program that ultimately won't go into production? No, it's definitely not. But I would contend that that is also not a reason to continue this program if it doesn't make sense. In fact, that's pretty much the definition of the sunk cost fallacy. And if you're not familiar with the sunk cost fallacy, I promise you that once you are, you will see it constantly in statements made by politicians and defense policy experts all over the media. The sunk cost fallacy is, in a nutshell, the reluctance to abandon a strategy or program because of how much you've already invested in it, regardless of how logical it ultimately may be. The sunk cost fallacy is the reason why Russian trolls will never accept the fact that Kinzel isn't a real hypersonic missile, despite all of the evidence to the contrary. It's because they have spent years arguing that it's real, and acknowledging that they were wrong now means acknowledging much more than Russia's shortcomings and means acknowledging their own. The sunk cost fallacy is what causes us to prioritize saving face, over making the right decision. And if you ask me, taking the hard right over the easy wrong is what I look for in military leadership. But to be clear, whether or not canceling the FARA program is ultimately objectively the right decision is for history to decide, not me. All I can do is stay on top of it, make sure I know what's going on and do my best to help you know too, and we'll have to play the rest by ear.